Welcome to the John Hersey Room. Three of John Hersey's works are highlighted in this space, a reminder of our namesake's contribution to literature, culture, and history. The north side of the room is dedicated to The Wall. Published in 1950, The Wall is the story of the Warsaw Ghetto. The largest of the ghettos created by the Nazis during World War II, the Warsaw Ghetto imprisoned nearly half a million Jews at its height. Nearly 30% of Warsaw's population were forced behind a wall that stood over 10 feet high. Behind the wall, it was cramped. People starved. And were brutalized. Tens of thousands of people died here. Many more were sent to the Nazi death camps. The Wall is a novel that takes place in the ghetto. Written as a series of diary entries, the novel explores the human spirit of resistance and perseverance in a world devoid of compassion and empathy. The highlight in this section of the room is a full-size statue of a man breaking free from the wall. Artist Theodore Gall wanted to capture the spirit of Hersey's book, demonstrating that humans can overcome any obstacle. The statue was commissioned in 1981. For most of its years, the statue has been outside in the back of the school, but now finds its rightful place in the John Hersey Room. This quaint Italian landscape is the setting of A Bell for Adano. Based on the real-life city of Lakata, A Bell for Adano is the story of Operation Husky in World War II. Nearly a year before D-Day, Allied troops under the command of Dwight D. Eisenhower staged an invasion of Sicily to take out fascist dictator Mussolini. During the assault, the Americans set up headquarters in Lakata. Prior to the invasion, the city's old bell was taken and melted down for bullets by Mussolini's fascist troops. John Hersey was moved by the story of Lakata's missing bell and used it as the inspiration for a Bell for Adano, a fictional city he created for the novel, yet the novel is steeped in history. A Bell for Adano was published in 1944 to critical acclaim. The book was made into a movie starring Gene Tierney in 1945. That year, John Hersey won the Pulitzer Prize for A Bell for Adano. Located on the eastern wall of the John Hersey Room is a signed edition of A Bell for Adano, given to Mr. Bob Hannon, who was the assistant principal for student activities at Hersey High School. Bob Hannon died unexpectedly in 2003. Hersey's book, and his signature, was one of his prized possessions, now hanging in the John Hersey Room. August 6th, 1945, the world changed forever. The United States dropped the first atomic bomb without warning on the city of Hiroshima, Japan, and three days later on Nagasaki. 
the world had entered the age of atomic weapons. The city was devastated. In an instant, between 70,000 and 80,000 people were gone. Many evaporated in the intense flash that was the same temperature as the surface of the sun. Shortly after the surrender of Japan, the U.S. government closed off the city to reporters and carefully controlled the information about the horrific damage caused by the bomb. But John Hersey wanted to get the truth. A few months after the bombing, he arranged a trip to Japan and quietly arrived in Hiroshima in May of 1946. The city was still in ruins. He talked with several survivors of the bombing and used their stories to piece together what happened on that August day in 1945. One of the few buildings left standing in Hiroshima was this one, now known as the Genbaku Dome, the Atomic Bomb Dome. It takes up much of the south wall of the John Hersey Room. John Hersey's book is a masterpiece of investigative journalism. Before being published in book form, however, the entire issue of the August 31st edition of The New Yorker magazine was devoted to Hersey's work. The article was simply entitled, A Reporter at Large, Hiroshima. The display case contains that original issue of the New Yorker from 1946, complete with the rare white band of paper announcing to the world this journalistic masterpiece. Here you will also find various editions of the book still considered to be the best piece of journalistic writing of the 20th century. In 1985, John Hersey revisited Hiroshima and wrote again for The New Yorker. That magazine is on display, too. The presence of John Hersey can be felt in this room and in this school. He was here when the school opened, and he came several times over the years and spoke at graduations. In 1986, he had these words for graduates. If I were to say one serious thing, it would be to charge you with responsibility as you grow into adulthood and become voting citizens. Do everything you can to help make sure that this nation remains in peace and the nuclear weapons are never used again. John Hersey died in 1993 at the age of 78. The John Hersey Room is a reminder of his legacy and honors not just the man, but the values he represented. Compassion, understanding, service, and most importantly, truth. <laughs>